In this episode, we join the ultimate cult with five heroic hot rods that have been customized to go fast. We've stripped back the future. Am I scared driving it? Yes. Ah, see, there you go, the grind right there. Souped up the classics. They want you to use it and abuse it. I've never seen another Maverick quite like this one. Describe this car in three words, owning a dragon. And champion the risk takers that think big. If it's going to be a boring car, mm, I don't want to do it. People like something different. But there's one thing about a hot rod. <laughs> They're built for speed. The best thing about driving this car, it reminds you that you're alive. Craziest car on the planet. Think about what makes a hot rod great. It's so much about personal preference. And it's got flames, it's black, it's got big slicks on the back, and it's not driven by technology. It's driven by the sound and the fury of exploding gasoline and, and the feel of the open road. If I had to describe this car in three words, owning a dragon. This is the 1930s original hot rod. My name is Joe Locker. I'm the owner of this 1932 Ford Roadster, what they call a high boy hot rod, and it's got race history back to the late 1940s on the dry lakes in California. This original 1932 Ford Roadster was priced at just 495 bucks back in the day. This baby's now worth nearly six figures. Once referred to as cheap throwaway cars, these were a hot rodder's dream. They would tear them apart and build them from its base, creating the ultimate custom ride. And these guys have brought a beauty back to life. I'd say I drive this car in the summer months several times a week, always. It's easy to operate, it's easy to get around in, as long as it's not raining because we don't have a top. Top down cruising the best way, brother. You driving a car like this, you get a lot of reactions. Almost everyone does something. Usually it's waving, honking, thumbs up. Well, as far as hot rods go, this one's pretty easy and comfortable car to operate. Pick a driving position, hang on to the wheel, and uh, hang on for dear life is what it amounts to. Man, this ride is a beauty. Something this special can only be built by very talented technicians. We built a lot of really cool cars, and we maintained a lot of cool cars. This is one of them. This dude loves a hot rod nearly as much as me. What appeals to me about these cars is the originality of them. This car is completely Henry Ford steel from 1932. It was modified, raced, modified again, driven on the street. Uh, it's still here, representing the history of American hot rod. How much work has this baby had, though? We didn't do a lot to the engine because it was it was in pretty good shape, but we did clean up a couple things, cleaned up a little bit of the wiring. We pulled the center section out, and we had the housing replaced, so no more leaks. And then we reconfigured the length of the arms for the steering and squared the chassis up so we could drive it safely. This is one hot, hot rod. The flames on this car were created in the 1970s by a fairly well-known pinstriper in the Denver area named Rody Kushnerite. And the neat thing about them is they're candy flames, and they actually shimmer and change color as the sun hits them different ways. It's got a Bell-style early race steering wheel, all these black-faced Stuart Warner gauges. It's got a Pioneer Super Tuner. That was the stereo to have in the 1970s. On the dash in the corner here is a timing tag from the late 1940s, which captures the moment that this car was timed on the Harpers Dry Lake in California. And so this car has been there and done that. 
Man, let me get behind the wheel. I'd have to say the best thing about driving this car is the way it makes you feel. It reminds you that you're alive. I mean, we live in a time where if you're not careful, you can be in a dark room staring at a screen all day. And this is, I would say, 180 degrees opposite from that. It's fun and it's exciting and it, you can't help but have a smile on your face when you get to where you're going. Amen to that. From a truly historic hot rod to a modern maverick, From 1969, Ford released the Maverick. Built for just a decade, this two-door sedan might have been consigned to history. But for hardcore hot rodders, nothing is off limits. I think the term hot rod means you're taking something and making it your own. It's a Maverick. I mean, when's the last time you saw a Maverick done? I've never seen another Maverick quite like this one. This modern Maverick was named Hot Rod of the Year by Gran Turismo at SEMA 2018. Inspired by hot rods of the past, they were determined to bring a new twist to town. Packed with all the latest tech, this furiously fast Ford is determined to break records and hearts. Jimmy Shaw created this beauty out of nowhere. Now we have the good guy show, Hot Rod of the Year. Today, he's showing it off to fellow hot rod enthusiasts. Started out probably about five or six years ago. I found this little car on eBay, and then I got to thinking, I've always wanted to run 200 miles an hour. So I said, let's build a car that would do that. And to build the best, Jimmy went to father and son duo Greening to bring his vision to life. Maverick ranks very high with all the builds that we've done over the years. On this car, comparing it to the original, from the fender flares up on the car is basically untouched Ford sheet metal and trim around the top. The lines looked great, and we still wanted people to be able to recognize the car and it not look like something else. We, we still wanted it to be a Maverick. Then from there down, it's all been heavily modified. But if you change it up, you're kind of hot rodding it. The original Maverick was proudly repping some low mileage, so having a canvas of this quality was only going to result in one outcome, pure art. We have the race seats. We have the roll cage to be safe. We have quarter inch metal that's been able to make the tunnel. That way we have a transmission explosion, drive shaft come loose, I'm safe in the car. I'm too old to have problems. The car's top speed so far has been 202.7 mile an hour. This one's just kind of been nudged out there a little farther as far as what it can do. And by nudge, he means leaving the competition in smoke. They want you to drive the cars. They want you to use it and abuse it. How good. If we could have raked a few more passes, I think we could have kept picking it up, just get to fill the car. But this monster Maverick is at home on the track as it is on show. Oh, man, we've had so many compliments. You still have a lot of people come and say, what is that? You know, they don't realize it's a Maverick. They kind of like, man, no one's ever done a Maverick like this before. He made a car perform and look good at the same time. His build qualities are phenomenal. His attention to detail is unmatched. And the car goes over 200 miles an hour. So I mean, not a lot of people can say that with a build like that. This car is right there at the top of my list of all my cars right now. Just so different. This is something that I never would have thought it would have turned out this way. From a slick show winner to a rusty looking rat ride. I don't like to copy what other people have. I like to build cars that are stand out from the others. Brother, this ride is the definition of standout. My name's David Jeffrey, and I build rat rods. This metal machine is Bella Rat. The main features of Ballarat are probably the exhaust and the general stance of the vehicle. Looking like it probably shouldn't be on the road, but it is fully legal. Named Ballarat in honor of his daughter, Bella, 
David built this prize-winning hot rod using self-taught skills. Him and his wife, Suzanne, design and build their own rods for the sheer fun of it. And Bella Rat is a combination of eight cars carved up for one crazy ride. And boy, is this thing a head turner. The build process for Bella Rat, I got part of a cab first off, and then I had to work out what parts were missing, like doors or cowlings. Find a chassis that was going to sort of fit under it. To see if I could make a car from scratch and make it drive, Ballarat took about four months to complete. She's a small block Chevy, worked so she can move when you need it to. Um, she runs into the zoomies so you can make it loud or quiet at the time, depending on your mood. It's got the old shotgun shells on there as a airbag system. So as you can see, it's sort of made up of just lots of different parts, but together they sort of make up a car. Brother, I need to see the inside of this rusty ride. Teeth tight, but comfortable. You know, leather-based seats off some Willys Whippet, I think they were. Old aluminium steering wheel. We've got the old helicopter joystick for the noise control. Even got the luxuries of a stereo system and a sunroof. Literal rock and roll, baby. We've been offered some good money for Ballarat, but it's a personal car, and I want to keep that. Amen, man. I'm really proud of what he creates. It's amazing what he does in the garage. It's not something that he just works in the garage and then switches off and then comes inside. Come on, dude, show us some shine. Bella is a prize-winning beauty. Yes, he has won a few awards. I'm very proud of David. I think he's achieved a lot building these cars, and he still continues to achieve a lot. Winning the awards, it's a big achievement. Demand for rat rods, yeah, seems to be growing against the wishes of our transport industry. But people like something different. They like to stand out. Most people, you know, want to stand out in some way or another. Brother, in this part of town, forget the bling, rust is king. From a prize-winning reclamation to a homemade regeneration. Boy, is this next hot rod one of a kind. No one's ever taken an electric motorcycle motor and put it in a car before. This guy has torn up the rule book and built the E-Rat. Am I scared driving it? Yeah, you just never know what's going to happen. Is something going to fall off? Is it going to blow up? I really have no idea, but it's... Ah, see, there he goes, the grind right there. YouTuber Rich taught himself the skills to convert custom carriages. Stripping out a 1930s Model A rat rod, Rich dropped 3,000 bucks on a smashed up bike to build this EV conversion. The E-Rat was a true passion project, proving that even today, everyone loves a rat rod ride. If I can describe it in three words, I'd say it's a work of art. Brother, this ain't no quick portrait. This is one savvy sculpture. The heart of it is a electric motor out of an electric motorcycle. Right here we have the, the motor itself. I had a custom made transmission adapter. This is actually battery pack that looks like a computer case. Everyone gets super confused over it. This is a transmission out of an old 60s Chevy. That's how it gets up to speed so fast. These seats are actually the third row seats from an old Dodge Caravan minivan. I have the gauge cluster from the motorcycle. And right here, I have the turn signals, I have the high beams, speedometer. So everything that I could, all the electronics were grafted from the bike, and it went on the rat rod. Man, you make this look easy. Surely this has got to be a tricky transformation. Woo! That's why we have the shield. You're a lucky boy, Rich. Figuring out how to mate the electric motor to the transmission, that was one challenging part. And the second challenging part was figuring out the accelerator pedal. Hmm. On a motorcycle, there's actually a twist throttle. So I had to figure out how to mount it up front 
and turn that twist pedal into the stepping motion that you're normally used to. Go on. I actually attached a manual cable, so whenever I step on the foot pedal, it turns it that way. Perfect. Now, the first test ride was interesting because there were a lot of naysayers saying that the small electric motor wouldn't be able to actually move the car. I was like, is it going to go anywhere? Can it even accelerate? And um, it, it sure did. Man, look at this baby go. So much for a small electric motorcycle engine. Uh, the acceleration is surprisingly good. What I do is I put it in first gear, and I just jam the accelerator pedal, and it actually goes really, really well. The transmission allows me to uh, work with a much smaller motor, so the torque hit is pretty instant. So you can see why you could do 80, but do you really want to do 80 in this? <laughs> My favorite thing about this is definitely the look that you get from people that expect a big honking engine to be in the front. It looks like it's not supposed to move at all. There's like nothing up front. It just looks like a bunch of computer equipment slapped together. Rich, you've created magic, brother. Why the electric hot rod? I want to do it. It just had to get done at some point. I feel like it really captures the spirit of hot rodding. And that is the E-Rat. From a homemade hot rod to a medieval machine. Our final ride has thrown down the gauntlet with a knight in shining armor. A crazy hot rod built from scratch, ready for war, and destined to intimidate you on the highway. This steel stallion is Medieval One. I'm AJ Bohada, the mad metal scientist, and right here is the Medieval One. This is a hot rod car that we built entirely from scratch. It was inspired by a car collector and a weapon collector. He collected medieval weaponry and he collected cars, so I put the two together. Craziest car on the planet. This is a precisely built machine that's made to look like it's old and made to look like it's evil. Hard Knock Fabricator AJ built this battle rod purely to shock his car collector commission. Known for creating insane engineering, AJ cleverly fabricated a helicopter-like interior, self-contained in the hot rod head. Built for New York and now riding on the streets of Florida, Medieval One is one mean-looking ride with a complete custom confirmation. The building process started out as a 1,000-gallon propane tank. So we cut it all out and we put it back with 1 16th metal. It weighs about the same as a Camaro with 1,000 horsepower. But there's 996 scales individually TIG welded on. The snakes have fangs in them. We hand carved them. Inside there is the purge tube for the nitrous that shoots the nitrous oxide out. It's the details that make one deadly ride. Our fuel cells have all scales on them, too. Each scale was handmade and beaten into submission with a hammer, as you can see all the pock marks. We have a 33 by 19.5 sneakers on the back, custom-made studs. We got a cannon in the back, but it's not really a cannon. It's my trunk. I got to have a place to put my milk. This mean machine is a medieval work of art. It's a medieval car. Is it the most wind resistant piece? Yeah, it's got a lot of wind resistance. Is it aerodynamic? Absolutely not. A thousand horsepower and changing tires like you change your underwear because we smoke the tires all the time. That's what it's all about. This here's our nitrous oxide system. Here's our Phytech fuel injection system. We got spiked headlights. We got swords that are hand wrapped with leather. Here's battle axes over here in case you need a weapon when you're getting out. That's some serious ammo. This is how you get in the car. You lift up the mask to get in, and then we have a hydraulic override. So we have the tachometer for the RPM, the oil pressure, the amps, the water temperature, so we know all the vitals of the car. And up inside the car, we have a secondary control panel. 
If you look at the car, the car is not painted. It's clear. You know why? We don't want to hide the detail in the car. This ride is built for battle, meaning big bucks. The car has an estimated worth of about $150,000 to $200,000. I could be driving the car for five minutes, pull into a store. People have been following me for 10 miles just to see the car. You pull up to a 7-Eleven to get a cup of coffee and a helmet, because there's nothing like it. What's my favorite part of the car? Driving it. You know why? Because we're drawing the attention. It's just, how many times do you see grandma pull out a phone to take a picture of a car? Never but they do with this. So my favorite thing about this car is just driving around and making people smile. Medieval One, a masterpiece of machinery and a true granny magnet. Do we plan on building more cars? Absolutely, as long as it's wild and crazy. If it's gonna be a boring car, mm, I don't wanna do it. I want attention, we wanna show what we do, so if it's gonna be a car, I guarantee you it will be off the charts. Brother, I can't wait to see what a weapon of a ride you build next. Five crazy hot rods, no doubt about it. Wherever they're going, they're gonna get there super fast. We'll see you next time on Ultimate Ride.